all, this is Dana here. In this video, I'm going to be explaining a little bit about how to do a backstitch. Uh, so backstitch is uh, quite often used for outlining uh, patterns and such. It's uh, quite often used in smaller pieces uh, to give the design some definition. Uh, you'll, usually it's done in black. Uh, you'll see it kind of like as an outline of a pattern or quite often inside the pattern to help delineate, let's say, like arms on a teddy bear or their eyes or things like that, uh, that you might not be able to get as much detail in using the actual uh, cross stitch itself. So a lot of the patterns I'm going to be designing don't use uh, backstitch just because I find it tends to make things look more like an illustration and a lot of my work is quite painterly. Uh, so the smaller pieces that I will be releasing shortly, uh, such as a few bookmarks, will be using some um, backstitch. And also I'm uh, looking at potentially doing some designs using a bit of black work. Um, and that's basically like a a continuous backstitch type design. Um, so I thought it would be a good chance to show people how to do backstitch, uh, either for my patterns or other patterns that they've seen and maybe they're not quite sure how to do it. So what I'm going to be doing, I'm just threading my needle at the moment. I have to do it in behind the camera, otherwise I can't see it clearly enough. So I'll just show you here. So what I've done is, sorry, I'm going to focus it right there. So I'm not going to focus. Um, one of my readers actually, this is for the loop method to start, one of my readers actually told me about if you put the uh, actual, yeah, it's not going to focus, it's too small, um, put the looped, like it, basically you fold your strand in half and put the loop part through the eye of the needle and that actually makes it a lot easier than trying to put the two cut ends through. So what I'm going to be doing, uh, for backstitch it de does depend on the pattern. Some will say to use two strands of thread, some will say to use one. Um, but yeah, do check out what the, the pattern says. Uh, you can actually make a judgment call as well yourself. Like you can try it with one strand, to try it for, with two strands, see how you like it. You might prefer a darker or a lighter line, depending on uh, what you're going to be stitching around. So what I'm going to be doing is, this is a loop method. And again, uh, one of my readers, or sorry, viewers, told me that it's easier to start from the front like this so so as you can see here I've drawn a little I'll try and zoom that in a little bit I've drawn a little tiny circle in a uh, lightweight pencil just so I can show you uh, how to go around corners and then I'll be uh, actually doing this little heart as well or part of it anyway so you get the idea so there you go so there's my loop here so obviously you're not going to pull it all the way through so this loop method is also in a separate, its own video, so I will be uh, putting a link to that in the description below, and then you put your thread back through one of the holes, and bam, there's your first little stitch. You can also use a knot or anything like that, whatever kind of works best for you. So there's a couple of different ways to do backstitch. Um, I'm sure there are lots of people out there who like, were you know, taught by their grandmas or were taught like at the, um, needlework schools and things like that. And like there's a special order in which to do the backstitch. So it's really neat on the back. I tend to work just in a way that's easiest for me depending on the project. So I'm not one to really worry too much about what the back looks like, whether you can see the threads being carried across different parts and whatnot. Um, so yeah, it does depend on your taste, what you uh, want to use the piece for. Obviously, if you're learning to cross stitch so you can compete in like say local craft fairs and things like that where there's judging, your back is gonna have to look nice because that is judged. But in general, if you're just wanting to do this for yourself and make beautiful things for your home, I personally wouldn't really stress about the back too much because it's just, a lot of extra work and sometimes nobody's ever going to see it. So as you can see I've come up, so I'm doing a diagonal stitch here. So I'm going to go from this corner here up to this one here. So I'm coming up ahead of it and I'm going to go back. So I've come up here and I'm going to go back in here. And then I can come up I can either come up at the end of the stitch again and go back, or I can come up at the beginning. So this time I'm going to come up at the beginning of the stitch, go into the hole, and 
uh, and then I'm gonna obviously you can't come up the same hole you just went in otherwise your stitch will pop out so I'm gonna come up at the end of the next stitch and go back to the beginning so in this way I'm alternating between starting at the beginning and starting at the end of the stitch so this is how you would do a basic back stitch you can do quite a lot with back stitch actually um, some patterns you can see I'm actually going straight into the holes directly in the Ada fabric. I'm trying to zoom in here so I can really show you. You can see that you know the Ada fabric does have like really nice, clearly defined holes. You can do some patterns will you know try to make you insane, and they'll have back stitch basically going into the center of each of those blocks. So they're called quarter stitches. Uh, quite often the actual cross stitch itself will be a quarter stitch or a three quarter stitch or whatever. That way uh, you can actually get a lot more definition in your design. I do not design using quarter stitches, three quarter stitches, half stitches, all that kind of stuff. For me personally it's more of a challenge as a designer to try and get the pattern looking as detailed as possible but using fabric like this is 14 count Ada, which is really good for beginners and it's, uh, you know, like I'm not a beginner myself, but I prefer this because it's easier to see without a magnifying glass. Uh, some people don't mind using higher thread counts because they can get a lot more detail into a smaller physical space. But for me, that's part of the challenge is trying to make something look really nice without making the person who's going to be on the other end of the pattern stitching it, making them crazy. Or crazier, in my case. Anyhow, so, coming out, and sorry if this keeps going in and out of focus because I keep moving the hoop back and forth so it keeps getting out of focus a bit. There we go, back into focus. So, as I said, this is using two strands. It's basically one strand that's been doubled. So you can see it creates quite a nice defined line. This is a quite a dark gray thread I'm using. I thought it would show up a little bit better than black. Sometimes black, you can't really see the shadowing of the individual stitches because it's so dark. Okay, so there's my little circle done. Hooray! So what I'm going to do is I'm actually not even going to tie my thread off because this is a sample piece I'm just going to jump straight across the back and start working around this so in this little heart here I'm just going to try and focus in a little bit um, there's a couple ways you could do this because the stitching because I haven't used quarter stitches in which case this tiny little section here would be filled in with pink so because I haven't used quarter stitches I could I could outline it using a diagonal stitch here but then you're going to see a little bit of the white showing. It would create more of a heart shape because it would be a little bit more rounded, but it also would, you'd see a little bit of the white fabric, so it would kind of look a little odd to me. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm actually just going to be following the lines directly of the fabric, so it's going to end up looking a little bit blockier, but to me it's going to look a lot nicer because you're not going to have any uh, gaps between where the line is and where the stitches around it are. So I'm going to be starting here. And a couple of things you can do with um, back stitch as well. You don't necessarily have to go in and out of each individual hole. If you're doing a straight stitch, you can just drop straight down into the next stitch down. Like I would make sure that's a little bit tighter so it doesn't kind of bubble up and whatnot. I wouldn't do that for too long of a, a run, like maybe over two or three stitches, otherwise you're going to potentially catch the thread or it's going to start st sticking up a little bit. But you definitely can do it over a couple of stitches. It saves you going in and out of a lot more other stitches. And yeah, it's just a little bit faster to do. Some people really, really like doing backstitch. A lot of people really hate it, even though the effect is really, really beautiful. Um, the actual they actually don't really enjoy doing it that much. So that's why I tend to not use it in my patterns. I, Like I said, I try to keep my images looking as sort of painterly as possible. And for me that means not using backstitch except when it's really necessary for a smaller piece to give some definition. So you can see I'm doing the same thing I was in the little circle. I'm just alternating between going into the end of the stitch and then back into the front of the stitch. So if you're doing black work, which is basically um, 
it's kind of like back stitch, but you create these repetitive patterns and it can create different densities and it's really, really beautiful. It looks like iron trellis work. It's really, really beautiful. Um, if you're doing black work, quite often people would, uh, some people like to try to make their back look exactly the same as the front, um, depending on the type of stitch you're using for black work that may or may not be possible. With a running stitch, it's definitely possible. Um, what you would do is you would come up and down, say for example, you would come up here, you would come down in the next one here, and then you would come up again and down. So you're actually only getting a stitch every second uh, thread. And then you would come back the same way and fill in the gaps. In that way, your back is going to look exactly the same as your front. So I'm not going to be demonstrating that in this video, but that is one way to make sure that your back does look the same as your front, at least with the double running stitch, or it's also called a, the whole bean stitch. So you can see here I'm doing the two individual stitches up the side rather than the one longer stitch, just so you can see the difference between the two. So obviously depending on the size of your piece, may or may not take a long time to do backstitch. Some patterns are really heavy in backstitch. Uh, I've seen some that are really beautiful though. They're um, like say uh, say a Japanese kimono, uh, woman wearing a kimono and the kimono is just covered in really highly detailed uh, backstitch to create the embroidery patterns on the kimono and yeah it can take you forever to do it but the effect is just stunning. So. You know, I'm not completely against backstitch, I just find for a lot of my designs it doesn't suit it. It tends to make them, I don't know, just doesn't quite work for some of my patterns. So I'm almost at the end here. So you can see how it just gives the pattern a little bit more definition. Makes the colors pop out a little bit more. And one thing you can do too is, you, if you see really careful, close, you can see that my thread's twisting. One thing you can do to make your threads lie flatter, there's a couple of different ways, but one is to, like, for me, if I twist my needle counterclockwise, that tends to untwist my thread. So if I um, try to remember that, you know, every couple of stitches to, un to give my needle a little, you know, half twist counterclockwise, it tends to unravel my um, thread, because I guess when I put my needle in the needle twists a little bit every time I put the needle in so it twists the thread. If your threads are flat, you can see here, then they'll actually lie. If your threads are straight, they'll lie flatter and that will actually give you a little bit more coverage. So you can do that with your actual cross stitches as well. It's a technique called railroading. There's a couple of different ways. There's little tools you can get that would lay your threads straighter. You can um, put your needle in between them before can't even do it. It's hard to do with the camera in the way. You put your needle in between them and that way when you put pull your thread through those two um, stitches will lie right next to each other. Two threads will lie right next to each other as opposed to being twisted. Um, so it is a way of getting a little bit more coverage out of your floss too. And actually quite often um, certain colors of floss will be different densities. I've noticed that blacks and darker colors tend to sort of plump the floss up a little bit. Uh, whereas uh, lighter colors tend to, uh, the, the floss tends to be quite fine. So it's nothing to do with the actual floss, it's just different dyes react differently with the actual, uh, the cotton or whatever your floss is made out of, silk or whatnot. And so the, the thread does seem to be a little bit thicker or a little bit fluffier or whatnot. So that is something to take into account too, which is why, you know, you may want to trial with two strands when doing backstitch. You may want to try with one strand when doing backstitch and see which one you prefer. So there you go. There's my little heart and I'll zoom in so you can see the difference between the two sides. So if, I'm not sure if it's quite showing up, but you can see on this side, you can see the little dent where the, um, the second stitch has gone in in the corner, whereas on this side, it's just straight. You can see that it's one bigger stitch. But yeah, it's all personal preference. Whatever works best for you. Um, 
like I said, I'm really not a traditional stitcher in that I don't really care what the back looks like. Obviously, it has to be neat and, you know, there's no big giant tangles of thread at the back because then otherwise, you know, your other stitches are going to get caught up in it. It's going to um, present problems for framing later, potentially if you have giant knots on the back of your piece. Um, and it just wastes a lot of thread too, so you might end up running out of a color when you otherwise wouldn't have. So, I mean, there are some things to consider, but I'm definitely not one to really be that into thinking, oh my god, the back has to look perfect, and uh, it's, that's not me, and I know for a lot of people who are doing this just to relax, or um, just to create something beautiful, it's just really not worth getting really wound up about things like whether your back looks perfect, because quite honestly, nobody's going to see it. Um, so yeah, that's it for now. That's uh, my little demo of of the back stitch. Um, if you have any questions, please do feel free to leave comments in the comment box below. I do try to reply to them uh, within 24 hours, and usually a lot faster than that. And yeah, if you have any questions, like I said, please feel free to let me know. Uh, the patterns I'm working on will be released really soon. I'm hoping within the next few days or a week or so. Um, and yeah, I'll talk to you later. Bye for now.